Hey friend, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I write my videos in Rome. So if you've been following this channel, you know that I consistently publish three new videos per week. Keeping that publishing schedule without having a system would be a little bit insane. And so because I like to work smarter rather than harder, having a system to create new, original, high quality content is a must. And the minute that I changed my script writing workflow to Rome, I was able to create my scripts a lot faster and hopefully a lot better. And this video is gonna be one of the 28 lessons in my brand new course, Zettelkasten in Rome. In this course, I show you my systematic note-taking process to capture the best ideas I find from everything I'm consuming, like books, articles, podcasts, and so much more. And because of that, I'm building my creativity inbox over time, and then I'm able to use my Zettelcast and to create new original content for articles, courses, or videos like this one. So the course is divided into four core modules. Part one is about capture, where I go over how to create notes to save the best ideas from the content you're already consuming. Then part two is all about how to organize your notes for better discoverability in the future. Part three is called refine, and we go over how to make your notes more valuable. And then finally, part four is create, where I show you how to use your Zettelkast and to create new original pieces of content. And I've also included lessons in an intro section on how to use Rome more efficiently and the one hour masterclass as a bonus that will get you up from a complete beginner to an expert in Rome quickly. So that's basically two courses for the price of one. So yeah, you can get access to the entire course catalog, all 28 lessons. There's a link in the description. So go check it out if you want. If not, no hard feelings. Here's how I use Rome to write my video scripts. All right, let's now talk about on how to create a script for a YouTube video or for video course or a presentation or anything that you might want to deliver on camera. So I'm going to be doing a script for a YouTube video that I want to do based on Show Your Work, the book that I was showing you before, because I want to do a video talking about the main lessons and the things that resonated with me the most from this book. So the first thing to do is create a new page. I'm going to call it Show Your Work YouTube Video and I create a new page. Now I can open, if I close this, and I can open this on the side. So for example, show your work, and I click here, shift, I open this on the side. So now I have all the research here. Now, what are the things from this entire book summary that I created before that I wanna talk about in this video? I probably don't wanna talk about, you don't have to be a genius, but this part of being an amateur is kinda of nice. So instead, I'm gonna use the title, be an amateur. So that's gonna be my, just put a one there. Then I probably like of the think process, not product, but I wanna focus on the part of share your journey. So that's gonna be lesson number two. Probably wanna talk about the daily dispatch. Right, and then I wanna talk about the idea of stock and flow. Now you see the here that I am not agreeing with the structure of the writer here of Austin Kleon in this case, because he's putting stock and flow into share something every day. But for example, this part about open up your cabinet of curiosities, probably don't wanna talk about that. The good stories doesn't really resonate with me. Teach what you know, it does. Human spam, probably don't wanna talk about that. Some space here. Learn to take a punch, probably maybe sell out, stick around, not really. So these are like the parts that really resonated with me. So when you're creating a video script, and in this case based on a book, you really don't have to follow a certain structure. You wanna follow the structure that makes the most sense to you. That being said, it is nice to have some structure. So here on, for example, on Share Your Journey, I wanna do a three-part structure. What, why, and how. So let's start with the why, because that's the easiest one. People wanna see how the sausage gets made and the person behind the products. Now, in the part about the how, I probably wanna do an emphasis on people who are just starting out and don't think they have a lot of things to share. And here, I wanna talk about an idea of become a museum curator. So now I'm producing a new idea from my mind. Now, the idea here is that a person who is a museum curator didn't paint anything that is showcasing, but it's a person that looks at all the art, all the paintings and decides on a structure and on a way that people can see them. So when you're starting out, you don't have a lot to show. It's easier to become a museum curator. Actually, think like a museum curator. And then I wanna talk about personal examples. So this is actually the way that I started with my book summaries. Now, the way that I write scripts is I'm not gonna input word for word of what I wanna say. I just wanna be able to write a few bullets that gonna remind me of what I need to say. Now, if I'm thinking about four to five sections, I'd like to think that each section is gonna be two to three minutes because that's gonna be 10, 15 minutes and then intro, outro. And that's a really nice compact video with all the ideas. So I wanna talk about the book summaries that I showed you previously. This is how I got started. And also, I want to talk about my newsletter, which is one productivity was basically a curation of the best productivity tips online. So when I started out, I just took what other people were creating, what I really like, and I share with other people, and that resonated a lot. So book summaries, maybe tell the story a little bit. And here I want to talk about 
why I was reading books and forgetting. This helped me remember all the lessons and it was nice to share online so other people could read them. Also a nice refresher from time to time. So now I'm just writing to myself, to Dan from the future, what he needs to remember when he's talking about the share your journey part. At the end, I'm probably gonna delete the what, why, how, but in the beginning, it's helpful to have that kind of structure just so I know what I need to input. Now, the way that I write scripts is very much bouncing around everything that I need to write. I'm that sort of writer. Other people just prefer to start in one and then in the fourth or the fifth bullet just intro, middle, conclusion. If that's you, that's completely fine. I just like to bounce around. I'm a little bit more creative that way. Now, why people wanna see, and then it creates a unique bond with your audience. People wanna see, right? So I'm gonna copy this part. And actually, if you think of it, creating a unique bond with your audience, and then the sentence before, it could be encapsulated in the same idea. You create a unique bond with your audience because they get to see the person behind the screen and the products. Now there's this other idea that I wanna talk about here, which is when you're creating something, when you're creating a piece of content, you're creating it for two distinct audiences. The first one is the people actually consuming that piece of content. And then the second audience is the people admiring the work that you did when creating that piece of content. It is the process in itself. What do I mean by this? If I'm gonna create a video about time blocking, there are two different people that are gonna watch it. The first are the people that wanna learn and wanna apply time blocking to their lives. The second is a person that might already know about time blocking and it's also on the productivity niche and now he's learning from my video a little bit more that they can add to future videos and see maybe how I edit my video, how I'm scripting, how am I delivering that content. So here, probably as a conclusion on share your journey, I wanna make a little note of two audiences. The first ones, to learn what you have to say. The second wants to learn from your process. So then we get into the idea of the daily dispatch of showing something every single day. And now that I look at it, this is actually when I wanna focus on the early stage, when you don't think you have anything to share. So I'm gonna move this. The two audiences I wanna keep but this part I want to move here. The so what test is something I'm not sure I want to talk about, but I'm going to copy it here. There's no children, so that's fine. And now what I like to do here when I'm undecisive, if I want to talk about something or if I want to add a little bit more context, I'll add TK. This is a little bit of a writing tip here. And the reason for that is that in the English language, there is no combination of TK on any Word. What that means is that when I come back to it to review one final time before I record or before I publish something online, I can do command F to search something, do TK and find the parts there was indecisive. Maybe I need to rewrite a sentence or I need to add something. For example, on an article I'll do maybe add an image here or I need to draw this kind of image. So I'll add TK and sometimes it's a little bit nice to add a little bit of context. So do I wanna talk about this? So I'm not sure that this is so important to talk about, but I leave that decision for them from the future. So then we have stock and flow, and that ties really nice from the daily dispatch. See how it works, because be an amateur is where it all starts. And because you're an amateur, you're willing to share your journey. There's a cohesive structure here. The share your journey then goes into the daily dispatch, which is the exercise, I guess you call it, exercise to share your journey. So that is the segue, I guess or the seg, as they call it. And then the daily dispatch is part of the stock. And once you have accumulated enough stock, or I would say valuable stock, then you can turn that into flow. A good example of this is I've created a couple of YouTube videos and a masterclass about Rome. Once I've seen what resonated, what feedback people get, what questions do they have, then I have enough flow to create a course like this one. And because of this, of the flow, something that you've mastered, it would be nice to go into teach what you know. So you'll see that I skip tell good stories and open up your cabinet of curiosities. I don't feel those parts were really eye opening for me specifically, but I really like the teach what you know, and I think it's really important. And it's probably where I want to end this video, to be honest. Why don't you take a punch? Do I want to talk about trolls? Maybe, 
sell out, not really stick around, not really. I want to make this more about creative and creativity. So teach what you know. I'm probably going to copy this block ref, but because I want to edit, I can do like that. And now the problem is this is linked. So if I edit something here on the original text, you'll see that it disappears there. That's not what I want. So what I want to do instead is delete that, copy again, but then I want to replace this as text. So now if I change something here, it won't change in the original note. And this is a very good point as well. So I'm going to copy here again, replace with text, teach what you know here. Let's just put this underneath. So this is the what, this is probably the why. And then the how, I want to expand a little bit because it didn't expand on the book itself about the idea that you don't really know anything. Like there's this myth when you're starting out that you don't know anything and you don't have anything to teach. So at the what, I wanna connect this to actually an idea that I have on my Zellocast. And that idea is obvious to you, Amazing to Others by Derek Sivers. So I'm gonna open this page on the side here. This is by Derek Sivers, um, a guy that I really like, actually the one that inspired me to do the book summaries. And the notes here, let's just see the notes. Any creator knows this feeling. When you see something innovative, you're stunned. You think, I would never thought of that, what a genius. But the reality is everybody's idea seems obvious to them. And so what is obvious to you is amazing to others. And so here, I wanna give an example of Rome. Now this course itself, it's obvious to me, hopefully amazing to others. And what I mean by that is that this note-taking system and never starting from a blank page when I'm doing scripts or when I'm doing articles or when I'm posting something online on social media, that system has been developed for a long time. So I've been doing this for a while. When I started out, this was amazing. Now it's obvious and hopefully what I'm sharing in this course and what I'm sharing through my YouTube channel and my blog is amazing to other people. And I get that feeling in productivity too. So sometimes I talk with friends and they come up to me and they say, then an amazing thing happened. I discovered the Pomodoro technique. Now the Pomodoro technique is for me something that probably I came across maybe five, 10 years ago. I didn't even remember. It's obvious to me, but it's amazing to them. So you gotta take into that thing of what is obvious to you. And now the how is, how do you find that? So for example, here I probably wanna talk about prompts to help people get into that mindset of thinking what is obvious to them. So a little bit of prompts will be, what software do you master or use daily? For example, there was this guy that did Evernote Essentials. Back in the day when Evernote was still a thing. And Evernote Essentials was basically the startup guide of how to use Evernote. Evernote didn't have like a help guide. And this guy, Brett Kelly, created Evernote Essentials and it was amazing. And I think he actually ended up working with Evernote at some point, which is awesome. So Evernote Essentials is basically a guy telling you how to use the software, Evernote Essentials. This course itself is how to use for a specific use case, note taking and using as a digital Zadok cast and how to use Rome for note taking. Software is one of the uses. Now, do we have anything else that we want to talk about? Is there something you read or talk about every day? And now here, I'm gonna do TK research more prompts and gather other sources into this. Now, this might not be in my Zettelkast and for now. So what I'll do is I'll research this, put it in their own page and then reference on this page. So now I'm building my Zettelkast and with more ideas because I might use these prompts in the future for any other related videos about creativity or about teaching what you know. And I'll continue this process, again, just adding bullets here and there until I'm happy with the final result of this YouTube script and when that is ready, I actually use Notion to organize my workflow so I don't read directly from Rome. So again, what you can do here, if you wanna to copy to another software, Notion or otherwise, you can click here, view as documents, and that will remove the blocks that you see here that Rome creates, that bullet points blocks in Rome, and you'll be able to copy this into any other software that you want if you're using this to create a video, a presentation or another software. And so that's my entire process on how I script YouTube videos in Rome. So my script writing workflow might vary a little bit from video to video, but the core principles stay the same. By pulling the best ideas that I've saved over time, I'm able to complement my original ideas a lot better and make my content more engaging and meaningful. Another type of writing that I do in Rome is article writing. So I have another video showing how I outline new articles a lot quicker using Rome. If you want to see how I do that, all you have to do, if you're so inclined, is to click here to go watch that video. So thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you on the next video. Bye bye.